Right, OK, in a week that's seen the return to our screens of Test Match Cricket and a terrific performance by the West Indies, a great performance by the West Indies. I'm so excited to welcome our next guest on Chatting with a Lanky Legend, a massive hero of mine growing up and an honour to stand next to him on the field of play at Trent Bridge in 1986 in probably my first taste of a, a big boys cricket. A true great of our game, not only here for the Red Rose County, but worldwide. I'm delighted to be joined by former Lancashire and West Indies captain, the decorated Sir Clive Lloyd. Clive, how are you doing? Um, I'm fine, uh, Maggie. I, you know, as I said, trying to keep well and, and keep safe. Keep safe. But that's, that's, that's the main thing. I, I've just said off air, you never look any older. You, 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 you must be looking, you must be moisturising, you must be doing, doing right and eating the right foods. Yeah, being treated well by the young ladies. It's fine, you know. Um, yes, everything is cooking, as they will say. <laughs> um, tell me about, Clive, tell me about lockdown. I mean, what are we with? 14 weeks now of restricted restricted travel and, and, and staying in our, what have, you, what have you been up to? How have you, how have you been keeping yourself sane and keeping yourself your time ticking well, on? Well, I've been, I've been looking at films, walking the dog. I've been, you know, I've been, I, I'm not really going too far because they said when you get to my age and you get this virus, it's a, it's a bit dicey. So I've been keeping myself pretty safe at, um, during that period. But I know every cowboy film now and... Uh, <laughs> All these, all these different documentaries. And, yeah, I've been, I've been I've been keeping myself fairly busy. The television yeah. now I've I've got square eyes. <laughs> Brilliant. Yeah. So have you learned any new skills? Tell tell me you've learned, learned tell me you've learned how to cook or something. Oh like that. yes, I, I've I've improved my culinary skills a <laughs> hundredfold. I can knock up anything now. I'm I'm the black Jim, Jamie Oliver. <laughs> right, we'll we'll keep you to that. We might do another piece on that of cook, cooking with Clive at a later stage. <laughs> but we're, we're like we're here to talk about your career, the most decorated career as a cricketer and a, and a true legend of our game, Clive. Tell me about tell me about your early your early days in cricket uh, in the West Indies and, and in Guyana in particular. How you got into cricket? Well, the point is that you uh, you would know that. Lance Gibbs is my cousin. Yeah. And our, our, um, the, the cricket ground that we produced quite a lot of test players. Um, it was only about 120 yards from where, where we lived in Queenstown. Uh -huh. And we, you know, the Demerara Cricket Club produced Lance Gibbs, Barkley Gasking, um, Robert Christiani played for a while there, Morris Pacheco Fernandes. Of course, um, Cap he's the first West Indian captain. Roy Federicks played there. Roger Harper. Um, so we, uh, you know, we've had quite a few. I think a guy called Andrew Light too. I think he might have played for the West Indies A team. So our our ground, um, our cricket club produced quite a lot of Test cricketers, and and guys playing for the the country. A fellow called Colin Wiltshire who was there. And was unlucky not to play test cricket. Yeah. And um, where we where we lived at in Crown Street, you know, we had a, a backyard which we we can we can play on. And what we did was turn the the thing around. We were at one stage we were bowling in one guy's yard and batting in the other guy's yard. <laughs> and, as, and, and as the the weeks and months went along, the the, the we had the palings there. And they got broken down, so everything got wider. So we had a fairly, fairly big area to bowl and bowl well and field. And we had guys who would come and have a little knock in the yard too. You know, some of the elder guys, Lance would come and bowl there. So it was one of those things that cricket was the, uh, the most important thing at the time. We didn't have we had one or two good athletes and so on, cyclists, but still cricket was the the game that everybody wanted to play. And I soon moved across because my school uh, I was just next door to was opposite to the cricket ground. Mm -hmm. So any chance you got, you you went across where I had a watch and so on. And as a youngster, you you 
you know, you as a, an associate member, which you paid half the money. You never, you didn't get a bat, so you you field it and you bowl to guys and so on. Or you yeah. have a little net probably now um, after the the practice session. But as you got older and so on, and they realized how good you are, you got a net and they ended up playing White Cup, which is like a second division. Yeah. And um, and then Case Cup, which is the three day. And you were chosen for the country from your performances in, in the in the three day competition. Um, so I graduated from that, you know, from playing for DCC, got quite a lot of runs, and then called to trials, and then I I played for Guyana in 1964. Played against uh, Jamaica, got about 12. Then I played against um, Australia, 1965. Didn't get too many there. I think I got 25 in the second innings. And but from then on, I continued to play for, you know, my club. Then got another chance to play, and um, I went to on tour 1966 uh, with the Guyana team. I didn't play in the first game. Uh, it was LBW by Gary Sobers for North, but got 100 in the second innings. Mm. And then I got 195 against Jamaica in the next game. And um, I was told that I didn't come to England in 1966 because Gary Sobers wanted to, a uh, fellow called um, or Bino to play. Mm. And they didn't, by no, didn't get a game, so I was sacrificed. And in those days, you had you you did bartering. There's a selector. You probably had about twelve selectors to select eleven people. So you're always going to have problems um, unless you you did something extraordinary. Yeah. But I missed out in that tour, and, and I I went to India instead, 1966. Um, did feel did very well. I think I made probably the most runs in that tour. And then when we when the tour is over, um, he asked me if I wanted to play league cricket. I said fine because they'd offered him the job to play for Haslingden, but who, he got a job with the bank with Bank Breweries. Who was that? West Hall. Oh, West Hall, right? Got you. So that's why I. That's how I got. I ended up at at um at, at, at the cricket club. Hasingdon Cricket Club. And oh. not only that, is that um I did fairly well, but I used to play a lot of cricket in uh, midweek for Derek Robbins. Yeah. And we we play up in in um Sussex and I used to, you know, have quite a few good innings there and they offered me a contract too. But then Lancashire offered me a um a contract at the same time, uh, but Lance and Rohan and these guys are already there, and um, Derek Murray, mm -hmm. Kali Chiran came afterwards. But I said, well, no, I better stay with it. You know, I'd known the people in Lancashire, yeah, and um, you know, I had quite a few few friends in the Lancashire League, so I stayed with Lancashire. Farouk was the immediate registration, and I had to. Wait a year. Um, I qualified in 1968. 68. And but I had offers from Hampshire too. Um, but you know, I I just thought that Lancashire was the place that I would stay because I I you know I got accustomed to everything. The pies. <laughs> The, 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 the. What about, but Clive, you, you, you know, you, you come from the, the West Indies, you come from Guyana, it's probably 30 degrees, you, you, you turn up at Haslinden in the, in the Lancashire Moors, it's probably about three degrees playing cricket. How did you cope with coming, coming into such a harsh environment to play cricket? Oh, well, I used to have those sort of, you should call them, called the Jetro underwear. Right. You know, the, <laughs> the, 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 the long the long trousers and the yeah. vest to match and um it's amazing that um when the lancashire guys saw me with them they used to laugh at me 
but when the cold wind hit them, I noticed a lot of people asking me where I got them from. So eventually <laughs> everybody had these Jethro things on. <laughs> Long Johns and, 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 and sweater um and tops to match. But it was it was it was a good experience. I must tell you it was as those guys would say in the in Lancashire League that it took three minutes the the wind to to go through your body. You know, so if you're down by the well I was never really down on the boundary as such. Because that's where the cold air is, <laughs> and the point is, is that you got accustomed to quite a lot of things in Lancashire. That here you were, you know, the rain had fallen, um, at, at at you know, and oh, you said, oh no, um, we can't play today, and the guys will get on the thing and the the, the Wellingtons and and these these sort of um, trying to. We didn't Some have super droppers in the days. Those sponge to get the, the thing going. The guy said, he said, oh, no, no, we have to play. Clive Lloyd is here, and we're going to get a good gait. So you were playing when you are running up the bowl. It squelch, squelch. <laughs> the, the trousers were wet today. Oh, it was terrible. And you had those uh, box skin boots. Oh, and uh, as Peter Lee would say, when, you, when the water got in, it's like walking with diver's boots on. You know, it was, it was, it was interesting. Because you played in some terrible conditions. Oh, I bet you um, did. But but you know it, it, there was the joy. You get a you got a fifty, and then you got a collection. You got a, a hundred. You got another collection. The guys took half of the collection to put in the in the kitty so that at the end of the season we we would have a day out in Blackpool. So you know it was excellent. It was good camaraderie. Oh, brilliant! And it probably it probably taught you a lot about you know teamwork and, and and stuff like that. But Clive, you've always been an attacking batsman, and that that attacking batsman came with you from from early days into the um, into the the Lancashire League, the, the very very strong cricket of Lancashire League, and then on to on to play for, for for Lancashire. Like you said, has it always been in your in, in your DNA to be an attacking batsman and and make long long innings and lots of runs? Yeah, yes. The point is that I manage it more more often than not. And the point is, is that when you attack some of these guys who were, you know, and you knocked them off the length, they didn't know where to bowl. Mm -hmm. You you dominated them, yeah. you know. And um, the minute you sort of settled in and sort of prodded prodded around, eventually, you know, you got to take with a bad one, the one that popped or something. So you try to get on top of them um, before they got on top of you, sort of thing. And yeah. um, it it was a it was a good contest. It, it made you realize, although I hit, like to hit the ball, at times you you know you have to fight your way out of situations. And yeah. I did that fairly often because when you're the pro, they expect you to perform well. You got to lead by example. And I had a very good captain, John Winter, and he did extremely well with me. And um, we had a lot of good little, good little players around. In 19, 1986, um, I joined the staff um, and we played in a semi-final at the Oval. Uh, and and you, you, were, you, you were our star batsman and their overseas player for, sorry, was, was a gentleman known as Sylvester Clark. And I, as a young 18-year-old boy who just joined the staff, came down to that game with the great Jack Bond. Uh, as cover for Chris Maynard, and I nearly yeah. played in that game. And after watching that footage of Sylvester Clark bowl the speed of sound, Clyde, I thought I'm in the wrong game. I should have stayed being a chef and being a hotel manager, which I was training <laughs> for. And I, can, can you remember? Can you remember that game? I mean, fast oh, forward, yes. something that you're uh, you've grown up with, and yeah. how do you get to bowlers like that? I remember that because when he was running in. These guys from some West Indian friends of his would tell them that I was keeping him out of the test match and what I what you should kill him and should, what he should do. And you know, so Mr. Clark don't need a lot of encouragement. And he was it was bumper after bumper. And every time the guy said that was one for the over, you still got another one. So it was it was amazing. But I got quite a few runs and I think we won the game. It was yeah, we won the game. We won the game. Yeah, yeah, we, we, yeah. yeah we did. In, incredible it, it was, thing. It, it was, 
and and you didn't have I didn't have a helmet and and you know I yeah. presume that wearing glasses probably they thought well this is a blind man coming to bat you so <laughs> and I was fairly tall so I was a good target. Oh, I've never never seen anything like it. That 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 those days for me thinking why wasn't I a chef? Why do I want, why have I picked cricket as a career? But but you've grown up with that fast bowling, Clive, and you were captain of a great West Indian team with 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 a battery of uh, of fast bowlers. And how was it? How did you, as captain, how did you manage those fast bowlers, the great fast bowlers, such as your Joel Garners, your Andy Roberts, your Malcolm Marshalls, to name to name a few? How did how did you, as captain, man, manage those those great bowlers? Well, the point is because I was older than they were, and um... When you know they are young, learning the game and so on, so you can impose things on them and such. And the point is, is that they they learnt their skills under me because a lot of them started just after they played for the country, so they they didn't have that much experience. And um, uh -huh. the point is, one guy did say he said, "When you are annoyed, I we know that we've overstepped the line." And not only that, you had to perform. Right, you had to perform too. You you didn't have to. You didn't wait on them, you know, to to make all the or you know to make all the runs. For the first three or four years as my in my captaincy, my average was over seventy. So the point is that you know I was showing them the way, and they're learning their skills, and we never had any particular problems really, um, because. There was that great com camaraderie, and as you know, there's always in Salarty in West Indies, you know, because we're island people. And if you lose, you know, everybody want to know why X wasn't picked, or uh, you know, why isn't Y wasn't picked. But once you're winning, you get rid of that insular behavior, and that is something that we, uh, you know, you 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 picked up as as we went along. The people weren't clamoring for other people to get in. The players, some of them wanted to join because you 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 had a winning combination and you're now becoming world champion you know you're being called world champions and um you're getting all the adulation and so on so people wanted to join so youngsters were putting in the effort malcolm yeah. marshall was coming through you know even sylvester Clark played played eventually in um in australia you know and the training that we had they realized how how difficult it was, but it was enjoyable. Yeah. We, you know, we, we, we had a good time. Really good, 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 and a good bunch of lads. Yeah, it, it looked that way as well, Clive. And I think that era and that team in particular uh, was responsible for a, for a lot of cricketers getting into the game and enjoying it and playing the way they did. And there was there was one way of playing for the West Indies. It was attacking batsmen who, uh, who were stylish, who were the likes of yourself and and Viv and Richie Richardson, and then the fast, but the fast bowling was a, was a joy to watch. Unless you were stood 20, 22 yards away, that that wasn't the other side. Well, we had we had people like Lawrence Rowe, you know, yeah. terrific stylist. Alvin Kali Churan, uh, Larry Gomes, you know, and and we really had a lot of good young cricketers coming through, wow. you know, and um, late developers, but they did extremely well. Then we had. Gordon, we had Roy Federicks. Then we had Lord, um, we had um, Desmond Haynes and yeah. Gordon Greenwich as our as our permanent openers for quite a while. So in the seventies, we we sort of getting to getting getting it together. And mm -hmm. I'm looking at this side now, um, the West Indies side, and they are now developing some good young cricketers. You know, the the guys in the wings, waiting in the wings, some very good batters, and we have a good bowling attack. Mm -hmm. And we got one or two guys there who, there again, who are on the sidelines. So I think that, that this team could develop uh, into a very, very good... I wrote about it a couple of weeks ago, um, about the, you know, changing of the guard, and these fellas can, you know, moving from PM to AM, a dawn of a new era. And I think it, they looked that part the other day. You know, um, they played extremely well. And um, England have now realized that they've got a fight on their hands. 
for sure. There's no Clive. There's no. There's no doubt about that. This is this is a, this is a team. This West Indies team is a team to be reckoning. But that team of yours. Let's just let's just skip back again to that to that team of the uh, of the late seventies uh, and eighties. For me, was a complete team. A complete team, even down to the balance of the fast bowlers. You know, you had you you could bring Roger Harper into to bowl to bowl spin. Um, you had a brilliant wicketkeeper in in uh, in Dujon. Um, just before him with, with Murray and you had your, your batsmen who were a mix of, of, of people who could stay there all day uh, to people who could take the game away from a team within a session. It, for me, it was the perfect storm. Yeah, well, well it, was, it was actually. If you, if you, when, you, when you look at the team that we had, um, where the batters and bowlers are concerned, they were excellent. And you see the point is people think they don't realise that if you have four fast bowlers, but if you have them with contrasting styles, doing different things, you had Crofty used to run wide, but still get a terrific leg, leg cutter. Yeah. You had Malcolm Marshall swinging it both ways. Andy Roberts swinging it. Malcolm Marshall, who's probably um, the best, one of the, our best, if not our best fast bowlers. Joel Garner. Yeah. His, his pace and his bounce. Yorker bowling, some of the best Yorkers you'll find. So we really had a top class set of bowlers, but they came in, some of them came in later and mm -hmm. they fitted in quite well. Roger Harper, one of the finest fielders you'll find. Off yeah. spinner, he was, can bat, can field anywhere. So I think during that time with Roger in there, we had the perfect, as you said, the perfect storm. Yeah, it was brilliant, brilliant to watch. A brilliant era, era of cricket. But let's let's touch on let's touch on the on the Red Rose because I know that you uh, it it holds a very very uh, special place in your cricketing heart. The time you spent with Lancashire uh, and especially under on under the leadership of uh, of Bondi, who's sadly no no longer with us. Uh, but those must have, those those must have been some great times and some great memories, especially the trips down. To, uh, to to London and to Lords to play in the finals. Oh yes, they were. We we had some. We really had some wonderful. We had great team spirit, and um, you know, and and we looked out for one another. Harry Pilling was a great friend of mine. Mm -hmm. you know, I'm sorry, he's passed on. You yeah. know, um, Peter Lever, you had Shuttleworth, um, Farouk, David Hughes, Jack, David Lloyd. Um, Barry, Barry Wood, yeah. you know, we, John Sullivan. I remember once we played, we played against Yorkshire and Sully and I won the game for Lancashire. And as we were coming up, some, a, a guy said, you Lancastrians are a dirty lot. And so he turned back and said, what did you say? And the fellow repeated and he gave him one right hand and he fell like a sack of potatoes. And, <laughs> <laughs> as you know, Sully was an ABA boxing champion. Yeah. So, but he, uh, he wouldn't stand for, for nonsense. But they were great, great, great guys. I, I, I think the best years of my life. I, I spent, what, 19 years there. So it's quite obvious that, um, they, that there would be, you know, um, unforbe unforgettable moments. Yeah, it's brilliant. And you'll you'll always, you'll always hold a, a special place in in the hearts of the, of the Lancashire supporters, and in particular the Lancashire members who, who speak really, really highly of you. So that that's great. That's great to hear. But the, Clive, the, the 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 lads that have come on before you, the likes of your, your Yozers and your Simos, uh, have spoken spoken so fondly about you. And what are your memories of the uh, of the Lords Finals and, and the the travelling Lancashire fans? Because uh, you were there there lots and lots of times. I remember people like Jesse Lockwood. You know Jesse from Carnforth. Yeah. And Jackie, Jesse, they would book their their hotels before the season started because they knew we were going to get there. And it was amazing. And they used to travel with us all over. And we made people feel proud. It was great to be a Lancastrian and, and playing for Lancashire. And um, that's the thing about me. I felt like a Lancastrian. I didn't, you know, I didn't have a West Indian, yes. But you felt that you were part of, of the scene and, you know, and the people there. And, you know, I'm wondering now if we had a fourth and second division, how many of those championships we would have won? 
Yeah. Because we did not win them because we were used to lose 12 days, 14 days to, to rain. Yeah. So whilst the others were playing, we were um, we we were watching the rain. I remember when I took over from David Lloyd uh, when he got hit in his face by Bob Cotter, mm -hmm. and he, he didn't play till the end for the last couple of games, last game I think. I took the, where I was vice captain. We were two points of winning the championship. Wow! And and we had to and we went to Sussex. And it rained for three days, and we brought forth, but we won the we won the Gillette Cup. So the point is that we had chances of doing so, but never really got there. But I think in this day and age, with the covering that they have now, and so on, we would have given a very good, a better account of ourselves. That's the only regret I have that we didn't beat, we didn't win the championship, and, and more than one, uh, and we didn't on one occasion. The point is that one year. We were not beaten at all, and we still didn't win. Wow. Didn't lose a game. Well, I know you. I know you really. You really. You've got a really strong point. So me and you, when we when we chat at, at Emirates Old Trafford, one of the things we always talk about, Clive, when we must mention it now, is putting a roof over the over the stadium. Yeah, I think I think that is still something that should be done. I spoke to Ali Baker about it. I said, we, you know, rain stop play is all that. We yeah. should have a retractable roof because, you know, at Old Trafford especially, because, you know, a lot of rain fall, would fall there. You know what it would be like to know that it's raining and we're playing cricket. It would, at Old Trafford, it would be a, a great, great scene. And I yeah. think that we, we can have, um, we can have a roof put there with the, with the, the different, um, the university we have, you missed and these, they, where these, these engineers are, are and they can be a, somebody should be they, their thesis should be um putting well, a roof on the road traffic yeah. <laughs> i can see well it's it's a it's a it's a great stadium now clive let's uh let, let's get let's get um uh, the, the 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 bosses are onto it and let's let's have a look at it it'd be, be well, great you're the marketing a... side it's up to you now sir <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Clive. That's a bit of pressure on the <laughs> really well, think about the achievement. <laughs> I'm glad you I'm glad you touched on that that um that that, that part of, of the Lancashire setup. It was a it was a family and you know you you you, you felt part of, and you felt like a, a Lancastrian because that's what Lancastrians think of uh, of Sir, Sir Clive Lloyd as, as one of the family, one of our one of our leaders, one of our great players, and, and obviously one of the the great friends, and it's always great to see you back at the stadium. Um, we're delighted to have chatted you today, Sir Clive. It's brilliant. It's an honour for me to to catch up with you. We always have we always have a bit of a giggle when we uh, when, when we catch up, and it, you know I, I can always say that uh, you know I, I took the field uh, took the field with, with you uh, as a Lancastrian player. And have you got any message for the Lancashire members before before we sign off, enjoying these difficult times? Yeah, well, I think I hope that, you know, they stay safe. Um, you know, the Lancashire people are very warm. They've always been, you know, very kind to me. I've thoroughly enjoyed playing there. And I, I couldn't I couldn't think of playing for anybody else, any other county, um, because my heart is there and it will always be there. And I wish that um, our youngsters that are coming through realize how um, how great a club they're playing for um, and that they would put in the effort to keep our cricket at the top of the tree because it is you have the other old traffic down the road you have to live up live, live up to that reputation and um, it's been uh, it's been a great life for me and I'm sure those who play for Lancashire will will probably enjoy the same sort of camaraderie and um, success that we had. Brilliant, absolutely brilliant, Clive Lloyd. Great to speak to you. Well worthy of the of the of the Lancashire legends that you know they don't get they don't get bigger legends than you, mate. And I'm Thank looking you. forward to uh, I'm looking forward to ca catching up. And we see you uh, we see you uh, in happier times, 2021. We're all we're all back together. Fingers crossed. Good pleasure, sir. Thank you, Clive. Cheers.